So, in the series of learning object oriented programming in C++, in the previous video we have installed our VS code and ID, Visual Studio code, a compiler, we have configured our Visual Studio code, the compiler we have set path and all. And we have also checked by running a simple program just to print hello world on the screen and yeah it was working. So our laptop is all set now. We can write down our programs and we can run C++ programs and we can run right. Now from the, this from this video we are going to discuss like the theory thing as well as practical also right. So the very first thing is what C++ is an object oriented programming language. It is not purely object oriented but yeah it follows the object oriented programming the, those concept of oops. So that is why it is object oriented programming right. But first of all before starting to C++ like basics of C++ let me just discuss what is object oriented programming. What is this and C what we have discussed C language. So now what C language programming language follows? Is it object oriented programming or if not then what it is right? Processor oriented programming. Now what is this processor oriented programming? These are programming paradigms. Now what is this paradigm? These things basic things we will discuss in this video. We will differentiate pro processor oriented programming and object oriented programming. The main main difference we will see right. Uh, so, the basic detail we will discuss about object oriented programming right how this is different from POP the main reason right. So, this object oriented programming it is just a programming paradigm. What is this programming paradigm? Paradigm means it just a method to solve a particular problem right. Programming paradigm means it is just a way or you can say a style of programming of doing of writing programs which style you follow right it's just a method or a style of for, for programming that is simple paradigm there are different different paradigms right imperative functional parallel under in, imperative uh, uh, two types of paradigm comes like uh, uh, processor oriented and object oriented right so different different paradigms are there basically main are processor oriented paradigm, uh, processor oriented uh, programming and object oriented programming these two right. These two comes under imperative, imperative programming paradigm. These two comes under this category imperative programming paradigm POP and OOP in which we more focus on how to do the task rather than what to do right. Now what is this processor oriented programming as the name suggests processor oriented means Procedure means how to do a particular task right the steps or in uh, this this computer or programming language terms we can call that algorithm. So this would be oriented this would revolve around the procedure right main focus is on the algorithm how to do the task rather than what to do fine and procedure uh, we can say procedure or function right same thing. So, in this case C comes under this category right C, Fortran, Pascal these comes under uh, this uh, POP oriented programming right. Now see in this case we first think the system or the large project then we divide right. So, you can say our program is divided your program is divided you can say in multiple functions function 1, function 2, function 3 multiple functions can be there right or something like this you can write we have this main and this would be divided in multiple functions like function 1, function 2, function 3 and these function can further be divided like function 4, function 5 something like this. So, program is divided into parts that are known as procedure or function right. Now these, these functions are interdependent you can say these functions are having their local data also local data as well as they share global data something like this we have. So here we have local data as well as global data these are three functions for example every function is having its own local data LD means local data and GD means global data and each and every function can share global data in this 
POP programming paradigm we have global data and more focus is on glo global data right every function share more and more global data now the problem here is what so data movement is more so data is less secure in this case this function can update this data right also this function can also update this data so data would be less secure something like this we have you have kept some money in the locker in your house and suppose each and every person in your house can access that locker like uh, every person maybe it's your maid or the gardener or the, your driver every person in your house your house may be considered as a large program and each and individual is function something like this and each and every can access that locker so is money safe there no anyone can withdraw money in anyone can take money from that thing suppose i have put 10000 in there and another person took 5000 still i think that there are 10 10 10000 um, 10, rupees right but there are now 5000 rupees only and suppose i need 8000 so i think that there are 10000 rupees let me just take money but when i see that there are only 5000 rupees so the money is not secure same data is not secure in processor oriented programming this is the main reason you can say why we switch to object oriented programming right because the data security the security the security of data is more in that case here we focus on the algorithm how to do the task rather than the data but in object or oriented programming we focus on more on the data rather than how to do the task fine and in this case also suppose and see scalability it is not well suited for one thing in which we need more security second thing large and complex scalable applications the applications which require actively updated and maintenance this approach is not suitable for those things because there are interdependency more and more interdependency among these functions many functions are there right many functions are there calling each and every function something like this so see the interdependency of the code if you update in any one function this could lead to the updation in any other function also right if you want to add something some new feature some new function that is also very complex because of the interdependency code spaghetti code we uh, you know, call it so scalability is also not there right security is not there fine so now wh why in oops we have security see general structure of this object oriented programming is what in this we do something like uh, we have data and we have function these would be wrapped into a single unit there in pop we have function 1 suppose function 2 and we have our data a b c and this is our program something like this we divide this but here we do what we separate these things we separate these things right we wrap up these things the data to the function so this data would be you can say updated by this function only so less communication would be there what would be the general uh, no you can say the structure data plus function here also we have data plus function something like this and we wrap up these things and this complete is known as object this is known as object suppose object 1 object 2 one more object is there object 3 right so see we have wrapped up these things so the data movement would be less in pop data movement was more freely data can move from one function to other another function here yeah object can communicate with each other with the help of message passing how it could be done that we will also discuss in later video suppose we have another object also here object 3 so they can communicate with message passing so in object now what is this object see object is 
you can say a real world entity something like this this marker is an object this whiteboard duster camera my bottle table bed these are objects right we are also objects like suppose we want to why we do programming because we it's not like that we just want to write the simple simple program just to add two numbers print hello world uh, check uh, number is even or odd reverse a string no these are basics we are you know we used to get us familiar with the programming concepts with these basic programs ultimately what we want to do obviously we want to solve some task some problems related to real world like we are creating software hospital management system library management system shopping cart some e-commerce websites are there amazon flipkart so they are being created behind that there is a complex code in any programming language and to create to solve these kind of problems processor oriented programming this is not suitable for the complex and large scale applications because the main reason is what is the data security so that's why we move to object oriented programming now object is what real world entity a real world entity we can you know represent this real world entity in the form of programming and this is known as object right like for a shopping cart for the, that website customer object shopping cart is a customer sorry an object and what objects can be there like uh, uh, product so in short we can say objects you know corresponds to the things which found in real world right so it is close to the real world problems fine to solve real world problems to represent the data which is actually present in the real world we use this concept object oriented programming and each object is having its own data or you can say the state and behavior attribute behavior see suppose employer is a class so object can be ram sham jenny these are different different objects of that class so every object is having its own attribute like height color weight right and these are the you can say attributes or the data or the state of the object right which we represent in the form of variables and another thing is behavior of the object behavior can be like behavior like i can code i can sleep can sleep can eat can code so these are we we represent the behavior in the form of functions method in a class right class is just a blueprint in detail we'll discuss what is class and object and everything the main motto of this video is just to get you familiar with object oriented programming and how it is different from pop so how data security comes here another feature is what data security here we have access specifiers means private public protected if you want that the data any nobody can access that data you can keep that data private so your data is secure if you want that only few person can access that data you can keep it protected if you want that some data is it's no harm if uh, anybody can access that data so you can keep that data public so we have access specifier concept in oop that is why data is secure one thing in this case you can say the program is divided into parts which are known as objects and each object is having its own attributes or you can say state and behavior right and object can communicate through message passing right and here the code reusability is also there because of inheritance one concept oops concept is inheritance so because of that thing we can reuse the code so productivity would increase rather than writing that code again and again we can reuse the same code fine in detail we will see what is inheritance right so here more focus is on these objects or you can say the data because we focus in this more on data security so more focus is on data rather than the algorithm right rather than how to do so these are some you can say difference between you can write down pop and oop i hope you got the basic idea about this thing if you are if you are still confused don't worry if you don't know abcd of coding or the oops obviously at first time it 
it would be very confusing for you guys right because we have just I have just told you the theory you have no you know practical in front of you but later one by one we will cover these thing in detail once you write down code then you will be familiar with these concepts right so now this is some basic about OOP in detail we will see the four pillars of object oriented programming that is abstraction encapsulation inheritance polymorphism and the main concept is classes and objects obviously without classes and objects we cannot write down a program so those things also we will discuss later right so I will see you in the next video till then bye bye take care